Today, we're installing fender flares on the Miata. You know what I'm talking about? These things. Fender flares let you run wider wheels and tires. They give you a wider track width for better handling, and they look cool as heck. Plus, we recently ruined the fenders on the Miata, so I figured that was as good an excuse as any to get back to working on this thing. But is installing fender flares really worth it? Because once you start cutting, there's no going back. Today, we're gonna find out. I'm Zach. This is Donut. Now the wheel and tire setup that we have on the Miata right now is about as much as we can run with the stock body. It's a 15 by eight inch wheel with a 205 width tire. So if we want more width, we're gonna need to make more room. And that's where fender flares come in. So let's go take a look at what we got. So in order to choose some fender flares, I consulted with our resident Miata maniac, Jimmy. Jimmy, what'd you pick? Well, right here we got some nice, simple, bolt-on, auto connection, basic style fender flares. Oh yeah? They're about 15 millimeters. Additional width? Yes, that's from the rear. The front, I believe, is 10 millimeters. Okay, so these aren't very aggressive. No, no, they're not. But we'll okay. still gain over half an inch of yes. and additional I think clearance. It's just simple and it, mm -hmm. it's tasteful. Yeah, simple, looks good on the car. And these ones are actually made for the Miata. There are a lot of flares yes. that are like this that are just universal, but these are molded to the Miata. Yes. Obviously, if you're trying to gain more width for your wheels, you can also do a wide body kit, which is cool. There's tons of really cool examples of Miatas with massive wide body kits and it looks great. But it's gonna cost you more money. It's probably gonna take you longer to acquire the kit. A lot of pieces to install. Yeah, so many pieces and you're replacing more of the car, generally mm -hmm. speaking. So this will be relatively easy. <laughs> Uh, it should look great. Yeah. It'll get us a little bit more width. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's what I always say. Oh, that was a weird wind up I'm sorry, five, I didn't but... know you were doing that. All right, first things first. We need to replace these mashed up fenders with some fresh ones. These things took a beating on the 100 year old tire chute. Oh, shit. My tire's guts are coming out. You can see where the wheels and tires are hitting the fender. They're all mashed in. So I figured this is a good excuse to get some fresh ones. You know, we could probably bash those out and uh, use the fenders that are already on there. But you know, I want to put a little love into this Miata and uh, give her some new fenders. God damn it. Wow. Brand new. Now that's a nice fender. And then uh, I think this is how this works. My God. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Dude's already trying to dent the new fenders already. My brother in Christ. We're gonna pull off the front bumper and lift that off. We can get to the fender hardware that we need to get to. Get the fenders off. We've been through a lot. All right, that's enough messing around. It's time to put these fenders on. Anytime you're replacing a body panel like these fenders, there's gonna be a little bit of fitment required. Obviously, they'll go on, but one of the things you're gonna be paying attention to is like your panel gaps. So right now, I'm just kind of adjusting this thing to try to get this gap to be even the whole way. And it's pretty good, but it opens up a little bit at the top here. So, you know, we just loosen some hardware, push it around, tighten it back up until we're happy with it. Could I get away with just slapping these on, cutting them up, and jamming the fender flares on? Yeah, probably, but you only get to do this one time. This gets risky. There's no turning back. Here we go. Hair loss stops with today's sponsor, Keeps. Hi, I'm Keith Keeps. Have you been the victim of male pattern baldness or suffer from a receding hairline? Then click the link below and I'll get you the hairline you deserve. At Keeps, we don't let faulty follicles hold you back. Our online licensed medical providers will help you fight for your hair goals. We know what it takes to get clinically proven, research-backed treatments delivered to your front door. And unlike other hair loss firms, Keeps will get you everything you need at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Trust me, I've been winning back hairlines since 2018, and most recently, Got this trophy for my award-winning all-natural shampoo and conditioner system. Don't settle for less. Go to keeps.com slash donut media or click the link below right now to get a special offer. You may be entitled to a full head of hair. We got the new fenders on, bumpers back on, so now it's time to mock these things up. We're basically gonna kinda hold them, figure out where we want them to sit, then we're gonna tape them in place. 
Faster, Jimmy, I'm getting tired. Oh, Jimmy, hurry up. Jimmy, tape it. More tape, Jimmy. And then it's about time to drill some holes, make some marks, and then get to cutting. He's so confident, he made me think that he's done it before. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is take the hardware that I'm gonna use, these little M6 button head Allen screws, and I'm just gonna kind of hover it in there to make sure that I get it sort of centered up in that divot there, that little cutout. And then from there, when I'm happy with it, I'll just mark where the center of that was. And I got my automatic punch here. And then that's where I'll drill. No going back now, buddy. And then I'll drill through the fender flare and the fender at the same time. Then that'll make sure that when we go to marry the two together, that they'll line up and actually be able to be installed. Okay, what do you need? What do you need? Just do it. Let's shut just up. look good in your tweed and Come all. Come on, I'm here to it. help. That's I'll do what I'm it. Here for. Well, did you even see? Like you gotta mark the holes and I you drill the holes no and then you mark the line. All right, we'll mark the holes. Okay, now we'll make a mark down just past these holes so that we have steel under the flare so that we've got a spot to attach to. We are about to make our cut and it's pretty important. There's no turning back. We get to do this one time on each side. You have a lot of options in terms of tools for making a cut like this. You could do it with a sawzall, you could do it with a cutoff wheel, but what I'm gonna use is this. It's basically a mini sawzall. It's air powered. We've got a fine tooth blade on it and this will help me make a really nice, precise, thin cut uh, that's very clean. You do need to have an air compressor to run it. Luckily we have one. So like I said, there's a lot of ways that you could do this. This is what I've chosen. Kind of sounds like a fart. Sorry guys, so immature. Here we go. Vibrating so much I can barely like see it. Okay, so the cut's made, the holes are made. Now it's time to install our riv nuts. And we've talked about these on this channel before, but we're gonna talk about them again because I love these things. They are little threaded pieces of metal that correlate to different hardware. So these are M6, which means they fit M6 by one millimeter hardware. And that's just the way you measure hardware. And so the idea is that you punch a hole in sheet metal that these can drop flush into, and then you take your riv nut setting tool and you thread those threads in there onto the end here, and then you squeeze it. And you can see that pulls those threads in. So when you do this with the tool, the riv nut itself gets squished. It squeezes the back up and creates a back flange and makes a really nice tight fitting threaded hole that you can bolt stuff to. So it's a nice way to do a fender flare install or a thousand other things. Anything you can think of where you need some threads and you're working in thin metal, riv nuts are great. Another thing we're gonna be using on this install is this stuff right here, it's seam sealer. The one we're using is Pour 15, and basically I'm gonna be using this to prevent rust in spots where we've got bare metal. And all my little holes, I'm just gonna put a dab of seam sealer on the rib nuts. This stuff is gonna be used a lot more at the rear. We're gonna have a lot more seam to seal. It's like venom, dude. We got two whole fender flares on. Yeah. The easy ones are done. <laughs> it's gonna be more of the same, but the rear is a little bit more involved. We're gonna do the same marking that we did up front, and then we're gonna cut the skin just like we did up front, but we've also gotta deal with the inner fender here. We're gonna have to cut the inside and the outside. They're currently connected at the lip here, and then we're gonna have to weld them together. So it's gonna be a little bit more work, but we get to weld stuff, so that's fun. Beautiful. Cool. And all you gotta do is paint over the, the tape. Yep. Good to go. Done. Put a little super glue in there. <laughs> okay, so we are ready to make a cut on the rear here. And I think what I'm gonna do is make a small cut first, just to pull off the lip where the inner and outer panel are joined. And then once they're separated, we're gonna start to making our cuts. 
Again, you can't really easily replace what you cut off. There's really no going back. So you can always cut more, but it's tough to cut less. Even if you have a welder, it's a pain in the ass. This is also one of those things that uh, can really affect the resale value of your car. In our case, it's not that big of a deal because we're cutting off pretty beat up parts of the car. But if you've got a mint condition car, this gets risky. But you know, if you do it well, I don't know. Do whatever you want, F resale. Got the major cuts out of the way. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is hammer this inner liner to meet up with the outer skin. So I'm just kind of working my way around and getting it to stretch out. And as you get one section closer, the rest of it will kind of pull back down. And you just keep going through that until the metal stretches out enough to all come up and meet the outer skin. So I'm just kind of, you know, watching while I do it and uh, making sure we're not going too far anywhere, not messing up the body, and it's looking pretty good. The easiest way for me to trim a little bit of the excess off of this inner liner is gonna be with this flap disc on an angle grinder. I'm worried about any sparks hitting the uh, fuel filler neck. So I've got a wet towel on hand. I'm just gonna cover up the filler door with that. And if anything does happen to catch on fire, we got that. But I don't think, you know, I don't think anything's gonna catch on fire. got both of the panels trimmed and pretty well fit together. So now it's time to weld them together. We're really just trying to seal this whole thing up so that water and debris can't get into the chassis. So it's not like a structural weld. And that's a good thing because we're welding body panels, which are very thin sheet metal. Uh, and if you put a bunch of heat into them, it's very easy to warp them. So the way that we're gonna weld this together is what's called stitch welding. That's basically just a bunch of tack welds spaced out. So you're only putting a little bit of heat into an area at a time. So I'll basically just hit one little weld, move over here, one little weld, one little weld, and just keep going until the whole thing is welded up. It's probably gonna be porous, to be honest, uh, doing it that way, but that's fine because we've got that 415 seam sealer. Now again, we're working near the gas tank and now we're welding. So head on a swivel, have your wet towel nearby and fire extinguisher. Okay, just gonna goop this on real nasty like. Now that we've got our goop all gooped on and it's still wet, we're gonna go ahead and throw our rib nuts in. I almost forgot. We've got our fender flares pretty much done, but we also got a front lip, so we're gonna put that on right now. Let's see what we got. Jimmy, tell me all about it. What'd you order? Okay, so this is an R-Speed OEM style front lip. Okay. We were actually supposed to get these OEM front lips, but we never got them in the state. What a tragedy. You too low? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's how you know they're cool. Especially with these fender flares now. Very cute and aggressive. Cute and aggressive, that's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> and you know, it's gonna feel nice giving this front lip to the Miata where it should have had it all along. Yeah. 30 shades of black on the end. <laughs> 30 shades of black, that's a good point, Eddie. This thing is gonna be all sorts of different shades of black, but we are gonna try to fix that in the future. Uh, we're gonna wrap the car in the future. Something I've been avoiding for pretty much my whole life. It seems like just brutal work, but that's in the future. Today, we gotta get this lip installed. Now this, this is a Miata. Wow, back in the saddle again. I'm back in the saddle again. It's nice to be back on the Miata doing some work. I feel a little bit reinvigorated. She's got some new body parts and pieces. Yeah. Looks a little bit better. This thing's always been really beat up. I know. I've always dreamt of kind of fixing the body up. This uh, is a start. Yeah, this is a start. That kid literally look at your car, and yeah, look at your fender flare. You look at him, see, yeah, see, he, he knows it. he got busted. Yeah. He got busted. Two take Jake over That's here. That's okay, we're both smiling, <laughs> so it's all good. But is installing fender flares really worth it? Yeah, you know, it feels the exact same, but I know that it looks a little bit better. So sure, right now it looks like a little bit of a hodgepodge. We got a bunch of shades of black going on. Yeah. But, uh, that'll you know, be a fix. Yeah, that can be fixed, and I think we will fix it. Well, yeah, so 
so this has been a fun episode. In the future, I think uh, some new wheels are probably in order. Definitely. And a little bit of wrap. Get this thing looking brand new. What color? I think you'll have to wait and see. Ooh. But hey, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you learned a thing or two along the way. Hope you're excited to see the Miata back. Leave us a comment uh, letting us know what else you want to see us do to it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, throw it down, any random comment, whatever's in your noggin, throw it down there. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.